Hi, all my Facebook friends out there. <clears throat> I uh, got your attention now, so I want to talk to you some about something very important. Some of you may or may not know my feelings about God and Christ and life after this world. Some of you may not believe in God. And, well, that's your opinion. But if I might talk to you for a minute about something. I've experienced in my 61 years that my life has been watched over and cared for. I've made lots of mistakes, a lot of dumb things I've done. And God was merciful to me. And I'm here to tell you right now that he does exist. He is real. If you stop and think about it, I know a lot of scientists say that the earth just sort of formed itself out of hot gases and the Big Bang Theory. But I have a problem with the idea that my eyes grew their own eyelashes to keep the dirt out. That my eyes just thought about this that uh, we have things in our bodies that when we cut ourselves, that the body heals itself. How does it know to do that? You have fish in the ocean that have lights on the top of their heads and they use this to catch other food, to draw in other fish. How does that just happen? Even scientists are starting to look at it and think, well, you know, things must be by design. And if you look at this world and you see how everything works, how the sun is in its place, it's no closer. If it were closer, we'd burn up. If it were further out, we'd, we'd freeze to death. How everything, the planets and everything rotate around each other. They don't crash into it, one another. And let's talk about the idea of evolution. And my, in my experience looking at things, I, I don't see it still happening. I don't see where if we walked out of the ocean and developed feet and then turned into one thing into another, I don't see evidence of that. If we came from fish, then why are there still fish? I, I don't understand that. I believe that there is a God and that he's real. And you may say, well, what's all the fuss about? Why, why do people come up to me and talk to me about God? What's the importance of that? Well, the thing about God that I've learned about him over the years is that he's a God of righteousness. He's a God of goodness. And I, for one, am thankful for that. Because if we were a God of, say, schizophrenia, we'd be in big trouble. But he's a God of righteousness and goodness. And if he is a God of righteousness and goodness, the one thing that his word says is that he cannot tolerate sin. In Romans chapter 6, Verse 28. Verse 28. It says, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's how much God hates sin. Now, some of them, some of you may say, Well, <clears throat> a loving God, how can he create a place like hell and send man to there? Send man to a place where he'll be tormented for all eternity. Well, God doesn't send you there. The one thing that God did is he gave man choice. Now, this is very important. It's very important that we have choice. If you have a child and that child, you want that child to love you, 
You want that child to love you on his or her own. You don't want to make that child love you. You want her to, her or him to love you on their own. And that's the same thing with God. And what this is all about is that God wants us as his children, but he will not force it. He will not make us become something that we don't want to be. He loves us so much that what he did was he, he said, I know that man has sin in his heart. Our nature is sin. Yeah. Our nature is evil. And as I said earlier, God cannot tolerate evil. But he didn't want to destroy us either. So that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross, to shed his blood, so that we don't have to be under God's wrath. Now, whether or not you're under God's wrath, that's up to you. If you choose to be under God's wrath, that's up to you. But he has made a way out of it. I was reading the scripture here earlier in Psalms. And I thought it was a very good scripture. I just want to read it to you right now. It's one of the things that I think confirms the idea that God created this world and that he is real. And that God is a God of, uh, I don't know, wonders. It's beyond our understanding. It's beyond anything that we could ever comprehend. It says here, How excellent is your name. In all the earth, O Lord. You who set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have captured, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son, the son of man, that you visit him, for you have uh, made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have uh, dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen. Even the beasts of the field. The birds of the air. And the fish in the sea. That pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You ever go out into the woods and look at the trees or go up into the mountains and look at God's creation? And each time you look at that, it's like you're seeing it for the first time. There's something miraculous in that. That is God. So I just wanted to share with you, all my Facebook friends out there, that God is real. He's not a fairy tale. And one day, these bodies are going to give up life. One day, 
you will have to stand before him. And we will have to give account of our lives here on earth. This now, where we live right now, is a testing ground as to whether we spend eternity with God or if we choose not to spend eternity with Him. And let's say they, there was no hell. There was no fiery brimstone and no worms eating you throughout, throughout eternity. Life absent of God in Jesus Christ is hell. So I just wanted to share that with you. God is real. And he cares for you. He loves you. And he wants you to be one of his children. And it's easy. It's easy as anything. It doesn't mean you have to run around acting like Jimmy Swaggart or whoever is out there, Jim Baker or whoever. It just simply means having God in your life. Let him be your father. And all you have to do is talk to him. The thief on the cross when he was dying looked at Jesus and said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now here was a man who never lived for God. But in the end, he realized, you know what? He's real. He's real. And I'm getting ready to face him. In fact, I'm facing him right now. He's the man here in the middle. So, as we go through life, we need to remember, somebody put us here. Somebody created all of this. And that somebody is God. And if you want to be part of his family, all you need to do is just talk to him. Say, Lord, forgive me. I thank you for dying for me. I thank you for giving your life for me. And I want to be your child. Walk with me to the rest of this life. Doesn't mean you're going to do everything right all the time. You'll make mistakes. I've made it plenty. I've been a Christian since uh, I was 16 years old. I'm 61 now. And I'm still learning. I haven't reached it yet. I still make mistakes. He still forgives me, though. He says he's just to forgive me of my sins. You know, Carl Malden used to do a commercial where he said, you know, American Express, don't leave home without it. Well, I'm going to say, Jesus Christ, don't leave this world without him. Good night.